What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are taking a look at some networking equipment, some hardware that you don't normally see me cover in my channel. And mainly because, well, I'm making some upgrades to my home network and I thought I'd share the process with you guys and also being a network engineer. Quick, quick, quick. Thank you. We turn. Three, two, one, go. In my day job, which unfortunately, yes, YouTube is not my full time job, I figured I'd cover that with you guys and maybe it'd be an area for you guys to pick up some tech tidbits and learn a few things here and there. But before we do get into that, I do have a quick video sponsor that'll help you activate your Windows license key. Let's go. Today's video sponsor is scdkey.com, an online marketplace that specializes in CD keys to activate Windows 10. 11, and many other game titles and etc. I've partnered again with them today in this video to give you guys the best deal possible when it comes to activating your Windows installations. If you use my promo code HUST upon checkout, which is linked in the video description, you can receive a massive 25% discount on your Windows 10, 11, and even Office Pro keys and game keys. Once you've made your purchase, head on over to Windows activation screen, click change product key, and simply paste in the key received digitally upon purchase. Click through the next activation menu screens and you are done. Now you have a fully licensed and activated copy of Windows on your new system. Again, that promo code is HUST on checkout to get the full 25% discount. Just quickly cut to the chase on why I'm doing upgrades, what the backline story is with that, and what all I am after today. What we're gonna be focusing on using is Unify as far as our vendor. I like Unify and the Ubiquity products, mainly because they're kind of that prosumer level type product that allows you to do kind of the enterprise style functions, have lots of granular control, but also be pretty user friendly relatively cheap, low noise, and easy to deploy in a home. Now you might be thinking, Dan, well, your network engineer isn't your network in your home like the latest and greatest and best. Well, soon to be, but I used to have actually four of the older model versions of these wireless access points. These are the Unify 6 Pros, the basically the brand new ones that they came out with, I believe starting in 2023, maybe later 2022, where it's going to be adopting to the new wireless standards. But I used to have four of the older versions installed in my home. There's actually one right above my head, which we'll get to in a moment, where I had them in my ceilings and all set up, but they were not actually mine. I was borrowing them from a building that my company moved into. We were attendant to that building and then well they wanted their wireless access points back so i had to basically rip them out of my ceilings and give them back and then what really is left here is what you see here on the table is the switch and this really what i was after with the switch not so much port density it does have 24 ports plus a couple sfp ports which we'll get into that if you guys want to know more about that but basically what i was after is a switch that could one, be quiet and run fanless because it's gonna be running right behind me. And you guys know this is where I record all my YouTube videos, but also I most importantly needed it to be able to supply enough juice to these access points over PoE, which is power over ethernet if you're not aware. So that basically covers what we have on the table. A bit overkill for your standard home network, I know. So take it at a grain of salt. This is just something I bought for me for my home network. But let's talk about what I'm dealing with in terms of my setup behind me and we'll talk about how these upgrades are really going to come into the picture and really work out well for what I'm after. Okay, so here is basically kind of the core network of PC Tech Hustle. I guess you can call it that. But this is all the stuff that you guys normally see behind me on the back part of my backdrop of my videos. But basically just real quick to hit on what we see here. So that's my cable modem for my ISP. This here is my firewall and it's just in a in-win, uh, I don't remember the name of that case, like a 302, 202 or whatever, but it's basically an old Dell PC that I converted into a firewall. It's a PFSense firewall. Let me know if you guys wanna know more about that kind of stuff, but I put a quad NIC in it. It's been running my home network for quite a while. Battery backup, APC, UPS, so that way if something happens in my home where I receive a kind of a shock to power. I at least have the time to shut down the major equipment. And mostly the, the major thing I would be concerned with is this guy right here, which is my Unraid server that houses all of the video footage and all the important files for running the channel. And I'm sure if you guys are OGs to the channel, you've seen the build on that guy before. Okay, so then as far as networking here, what I've got is, it's a bit messy, but I've got a fanless switch here from Cisco. And this thing's great, actually it does provide PoE, just doesn't provide enough PoE. But in effect, this is where I'm taking in all of my network connections from the firewall and all the other stuff here, the cable modem and bringing in the internet from here and then branching that out. So what I 
previously had for my wireless access points is this little baby Unify switch, which was doing okay for providing power on the old Pro wireless access points, but basically is not cutting it. Won't even power a single one on, but these are all the cables that are running to my locations in my home where I have the access points installed. So basically what this is doing is these are the cable runs that would plug into a switch, power on the access points to the various locations in my home. And then I guess you could say I kind of have a network data pipe that's going back behind my setup here. So you guys are really seeing the, the behind the scenes here, but basically what that does is that goes straight up into the back. So if you guys seen behind me, this kind of cable management thing that I have going on here, I kind of try to hide it, but that's going all the way up. And that actually goes into my attic. So we see here, that goes into my attic. And where you see those holes is where I used to have one of the wireless access points installed. And the first one basically being, I guess you could say the core one being right there. So this is like an old Unify access point, a light version of their access points. It's not very powerful. Doesn't offer an amount of bandwidth throughput that those guys will offer but it's what I've been working with since having to rip out my old access points from my ceilings. Here's where it gets more fun. So as you can see, this is in my living room and slash dining room. This is where I have a network cable ran through my attic. And as you can see, the holes there are the mounting points where the bracket was installed for the old access point that I had to take out and have not replaced since. The idea here is I was just kind of waiting to get the extra funds to really basically repopulate these areas in my home with new access points. So then throughout the house, I've got two more of these and I won't show you all of them just cause it'd be redundant, but basically two more of these that's repeating or actually capturing repeated signal from the, that little baby access point that we saw in my office and then kind of just giving enough coverage. It's really not good performance, it's just coverage. So how that kind of works basically is this access point is only plugged into a PoE adapter, which I got down here. And that's only literally for power. So it just runs a network cable power and basically just plugs into the wall. So it's not a very good solution if you're looking for performance, but it's at least been a band-aid for me as far as coverage is concerned. I wanna get back now both my performance with coverage. So before we get into installation of the equipment I have sitting here on my desk, I do wanna do a quick baseline at various locations of my home. This one first being in the studio slash office that you guys are used to seeing. And we're gonna use a tool called Nperf, which I think you can get on all mobile platforms at this point, but basically just gonna test what I get as far as upload and download on my current wireless network so that's not too shabby to be flat on it's 300 something although we are sitting very close proximity to my wireless access point that is directly plugged into my switch so that's pretty solid i don't particularly have any wireless issues in this room but i think we've got a lot to gain so what that did was a, up, a download test upload test and just generic latency and i'm looking at 329 megabits per second download 54.7 upload and 63 milliseconds as my latency to the test server that this application pings it's probably good to run this two to three times to kind of get yourself an established average but let's go check the other spots in my home where the signal is repeated and we don't have these hardwired in yet okay so what do you say we give my phone the absolute best possible opportunity to get a good wi-fi signal by putting it basically right butt up against the WAP. Remember, this one is repeated, so that's gonna cut down your bandwidth significantly, but let's see what kind of result we're looking at here when we do that. See how much slower that is on a repeated signal? Now that's not terrible, 100 megabits per second is pretty good, but if you consider this area where I'm in currently in my home, is kind of a common congregational area where lots of people that would be coming over to my home, be using the wireless devices, et cetera, or my kids and family streaming things, you can really eat into that bandwidth quite quickly. So we see that we've significantly lost speed just going from this area in my home where I have to use another access point to basically repeat the same signal. It's never really good and advisable to do that. Only do that if you absolutely have to. Okay, what the heck? I'll go upstairs where my kids' bedrooms and their kind of game room is, so don't mind the mess if you see it. But this is where I think the wireless access points make a huge difference because I've got an access point set up here that I, or I used to have set up here right there see where the cables hanging out so that goes right up into my attic and we're really far away from the wired in access point so we're having to carry over repeated signal again which i got here on my daughter's just kind of sitting up here on her computer she she's into art stuff so she's got a lot of things going on here but as you can see, another one of these small little baby wireless access points only being powered via the PoE injector that you plug into the wall. So this is repeating the same signal that it gets from downstairs. So much less 
opportunity for good wireless performance. But let's see where we're at here. We'll just get my phone set up on her computer where the access point is, plug it, put it right up against this access point and see what we get. Not half bad. I'd say most people can't really complain about that. Really isn't that bad. I know it's probably like, Dan, why even complain about that? But I'm the only person in the house running the only things in the house. Those numbers drop hard when we've got other things like her computer running here, as you can see, and many other things as well. So we'll definitely see a pickup in performance once we get these access points off from just being powered via the wall outlet and repeated signal and actually reinstalled into our ceilings and hardwired all the way back to the network switch. So what's next for me to do is get everything powered on and adopted to my Unify controller. And by the way, this video is not focused on doing exclusively that. If you are interested, make sure you get subscribed to the channel. We can cover that in a later video. However, I'm gonna get everything all set up. In the end, we'll have a at least a topological diagram that I can show you guys and follow along with, show them adopted to my home network, and then most importantly, show you the after performance numbers. guys so as you can tell from the b-roll we are now nicely set up underneath here in my kind of whatever you want to call this just area for my networking stuff within my studio the unify switch is up and running we've got power to the waps which actually that little amber indicator if it will focus is actually what indicates power green indicates network led and then i actually went ahead and added two connections back to my core switch here since I can now aggregate two gigabit up to my core switch which really isn't absolutely necessary you're really not going to get too much really of a benefit of that it doesn't necessarily mean with a ether channel like that that you're actually getting double your bandwidth but it does provide some parity of the network traffic and also provide some reliability obviously back to my network core switch but here it is all nicely set up one thing i absolutely love is this little lcd screen where i can do kind of like check statuses on my port so as we can see here we've got ports one through four populated with the WAPs, and the other two are just the core network connections back to my core switch so really cool that you can just do like kind of a touch quick status check of things um, you can do all kinds of other things here too by checking like the uh, power usage of the actual switch, the PoE that it's being distributed, etc, etc. So really, really neat. I'm really happy with this switch. And the biggest thing here obviously is PoE, which I needed to power my WAPs, but also a very important thing is it's dead silent. Both of these switches are actually fanless switches. The only real fan noise we got coming from this area is actually my firewall which is really really quiet and the server which is also pretty quiet so overall not a lot of noise it, it basically gave me what i was looking for and but what really got to go check out is now how well are these waps performing versus my old setup which was not all that great all right so we're back in my living room slash dining room area now with the wap installed in the ceiling we're going to take the same test from the same location we did earlier which was just the entertainment stand right underneath my tv where the wap used to be just sitting repeating signal 
Okay, and with the app open sitting in the same location earlier where the WAP used to be just repeating signal, we're just gonna go do a quick test. There we go. 300, 400, 500, 600. That is way faster than we saw earlier. And in the hundreds for upload, that's pretty darn good. I'd say we are definitely doing way better than before. Let's take a quick couple more samples where we have the WAPs located in the house. All right, so we're heading out here into my garage where we have a WAP installed. There she is. Let's turn on some light. Ooh, that's blinding for a second. Okay, so we've got that WAP up there in the ceiling. Let's see how well we do here. Just hanging out in my garage. Here we go. Ooh, flying even faster. Nice. I love it. So here in my garage, <laughs> we are flying with Wi-Fi speeds. Nice. All thanks to that hardwired U6 Pro WAP. So let's uh, take a look at what it looks like upstairs, just so we can have that baseline test as well, since we did a test up there at my daughter's desk. All right, so we are heading back upstairs into my game room where the kids hang out. We're gonna do a speed test. We've got the WAP up there in the ceiling. We're coming back over to my daughter's desk here where we did the previous test right on top of her computer, but where a WAP used to be sitting now is sitting up there in the ceiling where it should be. Let's see what we get here. Jeez, nothing short of 600 it seems throughout my entire house. I'd say that's going to be some very nice user experience Wi-Fi. What do you guys think? Yeah, it's flying everywhere. Needless to say, I'm pretty darn happy. So guys, as promised, I would share a network diagram just to kind of give you guys a kind of logical view of what it looks like, what I just did, so you kind of have a basic understanding. So what we did was we took four of the U6 Pros here and connected them to the USW24 PoE switch, and that's going to be trunking all my network VLANs, 10, 20, 30, 40, 100, and 200 over to these WAPs. So again, I'm not really going to go into like networking concepts very granular just because that's not really what my channel is all about, but just to let you know what's going on so we're trunking all those networks over to my wireless access points and then that is actually trunked up to my main core switch which is the cisco 3560 fan list that we saw earlier and as mentioned also we've got a couple dedicated connections i guess i should have two links here instead of one but it's gig 23 actually and 24 on the USW 24 port PoE over to my Cisco 3560. And then from on there, I've got other things configured within my networking to basically uplink to a PFSense firewall, as you saw earlier, to get out to the internet. So as promised, I just kind of want to give you guys an overarching view of my network and what I did here so you guys have kind of an idea. But basically that is it. And as promised, I'd take you guys over to my dashboard within the Unify ecosystem as well, just to give you guys an idea of what we're looking at. So cool thing here is, you know, we've got a list of our devices. We got our four WAPs here listed and our switch. We can definitely take a look at those things, take a look at my port manager, all those cool things that we've kind of already talked about. So I really like the user interface of Unify. It's very good to get a quick glance at things and take a look at stuff. There's obviously lots of things that you can do and configure within here, but that is not for today's video. Another real cool thing is they have a topology builder where basically you can see where all your clients are connected. So things that are connected to the different access points, as you can see throughout my network and then funnel into my USW 24 port PoE and it doesn't map the rest of the things that are non-unify which we know we have an uplink switch and firewall but pretty cool to kind of just get a quick glancing view on what device is connected to what WAP so pretty cool stuff I really like unified products well guys new shirt new shave new day unfortunately yes this did take me more than just one day to film and do and put together but dang those were some serious Wi-Fi upgrades this was a fun video to topic for me to cover because I am a nerd when it comes to all things tech, especially PC building and networking because networking, as I mentioned, is my day job. So let me know if you guys enjoyed this type of video. I can definitely go into more detail and cover some other like videos in the future. However, though, if this video was not your cup of tea, well then firstly, I'd like to say thanks for sticking to the end of this one. I definitely appreciate that. I do have a video for you right here that might be more up your alley where we do some part hunting for a Dell Optiplex to make it one serious gamer. Spoiler alert, 
the parts found in that video will be in the next one up and coming. Thanks for tuning into this one though, guys. I appreciate your time and I will catch you in the next one.